Hi guys, it's Miss Skoll. Today's lesson is Module 3, Lesson 9, Solving Inequalities. Your outcomes for today's lesson are students understand that an inequality is a statement that one expression is less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to another expression, such as 2x plus 3 is less than 5, or 3x plus 50 is greater than or equal to 100. Students interpret a solution to an inequality as a number that makes the inequality true when substituted for the variable and interpret the solution in the context of the problem. Students solve word problems leading to inequalities that compare px plus q and r, where p, q, and r are specific rational numbers. The first thing I'd like you to do is pause the video and complete the opening exercise. Unpause the video when you've completed it and are ready to check over your answers. So take a minute to look over your opening exercise answers and make sure they are correct. Notice that each time you should have multiplied your number of weeks by 38 and then added 40. Now we were looking for when he has saved over $265.49 and what we found was that occurs at week six because he reaches $268 which is more than $265.45. So, when will Tariq have enough money to buy the tablet? From six weeks on. Write an inequality that will generalize the problem. So, first we need to define a variable. Let's let w equal the number of weeks. Now if I look at each one of the weeks that we did, everyone was pretty much the same. We were always taking 38, multiplying it by the number of weeks, so I can represent that by 38w, and we were also adding 40 to that. What we were looking for was the scenario that this amount would be greater than or equal to $265.49. So this inequality will help us to generalize this situation. So this is the type of thing that we're going to look at today is inequalities from real world situations. Example one, a youth summer camp has budgeted $2,000 for the campers to attend the carnival. The cost for each camper is $17.95, which includes general admission to the carnival and two meals. The youth summer camp must also pay for $250 for the chaperones to attend the carnival and $350 for transportation to and from the carnival. What is the greatest amount of campers that can attend the carnival if the camp must stay within their budgeted amount? So the first thing I need here is a variable because they did not define one for me. Let's let C equal the number of campers. That can attend. From there, we were told that the cost of each camper is $17.95. So if I had C number of campers, we would multiply those two get, to get the total cost for C campers. So $17.95 times C. On top of that, we have several other things that you have to pay for. One being $250 for the chaperone, so we'll add on $250. And you also have to pay $350 for transportation. So this would represent our total cost, and we know that they only budgeted $2,000. So we could go up to $2,000. So we know that it has to be less than $2,000, but could it also be equal to $2,000? So if we want to solve this inequality, it's very similar to solving equations. We're still going to go through PEMDASO. The only thing we have to keep in mind is if we ever multiply or divide by a negative, we're going to need to flip our inequality. So the first thing I notice through PEMDASO is I have addition of combining like terms. So when I combine those, I have 17.95c plus 600 is less than or equal to 2000. Now I'm ready to solve, so we need to do the O, which is the opposite, and the first one we always look for is addition. I have addition, so I'm going to do the opposite and subtract 600 from both sides. I'm left with 17.95C. I subtracted, so I don't have to flip my inequality, it's preserved, 
and I'm left with 1400. Then I want to get rid of the multiplication, so I'm going to divide by 17.95 on both sides. These two cancel because they divide and become 1. 1 times c is c. I did not divide by a negative, so again, my inequality is preserved. I'm not going to flip my sign. When I divide those two, I get 77.99. Now, we need to interpret this in the context of the problem, and this is where you have to be careful. We would not say that we could round up because the number of campers needs to be less than or equal to 77.99. If I said 78, that would go above the number of campers that are allowed, and so we would pay more than 2,000 and we don't have more than 2,000 to spend. So we want to go down one instead and just call it 77 campers. Example two continues with this scenario and says the carnival owner pays the owner of an exotic animal exhibit $650 for the entire time the exhibit is displayed. The owner of the exhibit has no other expenses except for a daily insurance cost. If the owner of the animal exhibit wants to make more than $500 in profit for the five and a half days, what is the greatest daily insurance rate he can afford to pay? Our unknown here is the greatest daily insurance rate he can afford to pay, so we'll let X equal the daily insurance rate. We were told that he has to pay the exotic animal exhibit owner $650. And he needs to pay, so we're going to show that as subtraction, a daily insurance for five and a half days. So we'll do that as a decimal, so 5.5. And we don't know the daily insurance rate. We called it X. Now, he wants to have a profit of more than $500. So this needs to be greater than 500 now, there is no PEMDAS to do here, so we can go right to the O and start solving. The first thing I want to get rid of is this 650, so I'm going to subtract 650 from both sides. Now, one thing I want you to be careful of here, do not lose this negative. A lot of people will forget about it and just do 5.5, but it will mess up your final answer. So negative 5.5 times x is greater than negative 150. From there, I have multiplication, so I'm going to divide by negative 5.5 on both sides. Negative 5.5 divided by negative 5.5 is 1. 1 times x is x. But keep in mind, I divided by a negative. So this is the one special case that we have to remember with inequalities. So I need to flip my inequality sign. And a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and 150 divided by 5.5 is 27.27. But again, you have to be careful when interpreting the final answer. It's not that the maximum daily cost of insurance is 27.27. This says the maximum daily cost needs to be less than 27.27. So really, the maximum daily cost for insurance that he can pay is $27.26. In this lesson, you have learned the goal to solving inequalities is to use opposite operations to make zeros and ones to get the inequality in the form x is greater than a number or x is less than a number. Adding and subtracting opposites will make zeros. A number that is added or subtracted to each side of an inequality does not change the solution of the inequality, meaning you don't have to reverse the sign. Multiplying or dividing by a positive will also have the same effect. You don't have to flip the sign, but you do if you are multiplying or dividing by a negative number will cause you to have to reverse the sign to make the statement still true.